Hey, what's happening? Tim with Nomad Trading. Happy Saturday. Happy Labor Day weekend, Nomad Nation. Going to talk about stop losses. How to set a stop loss with E-Trade Pro in particular. I've had several people ask me about stop losses and how to set a stop loss, etc. So we're going to make a video real quick and talk about how to set a stop loss with E-Trade. I'm also going to make a video about stop losses with CMEG um, in the next day or two. So if you are trading with Sterling Trader um, Pro and CMEG, we'll talk about that in a future video. But for today, I'm going to go with uh, how to set a stop loss on E-Trade Pro. Okay, so here we are inside my computer. I'm going to use uh, yesterday's PLM chart because the chart doesn't really matter. Today is Saturday, so the markets are closed. That's why this on level two is all blank right here. If you don't have level two or don't have any of this set up, check out my video about how to set up eTrade Pro if you're brand new to eTrade. But let's talk about how to set stop losses with eTrade Pro. Um, so you're going to go down here to price type. I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible so that I don't drone on uh, mindlessly talking for 30 minutes like I tend to do in other videos. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Price type right here. So if you're going to do a thousand shares, whatever the case may be, um, you're going to go to price type right here. You have all your different types of orders. So uh, you already probably know what a limit order that's going to limit the price uh, that you pay a market order is just going to go to the exchange and you're going to get filled at their mercy you're going to get some slippage most likely um, market on close means that you're going to get filled at the close pretty self-explanatory okay now we get into the stops these are the different types of stops and stops are pretty universal across the board depending on what platform you're using you're going to see similar types of stuff you just may not have all these options stop on quote that means that basically uh you're going to go stop on quote and then you're going to go stop price i guess i should real quick cover what you're going to use a stop for what would be the purpose of a stop loss um, and that is basically to keep you from losing large amounts of money if you're not as disciplined especially for new traders uh, that run into that a lot. So let's say that you were, you'd bought somewhere in here and you'd drawn a trend line like this. I'm just using an example. There's a million different examples of where you would set stop losses and why, and we'll cover those in other videos. But just to get uh, to get into why you would set a stop loss, let's say that you had a trend line drawn here, and you had bought down here, and you know and you knew that if it breaks this trend line, I want to get out. So you know as it comes up here. Um, and it's curling back you might set your stop loss for instance if it's right here and you got your trend line drawn you might say okay I want to stop out if it breaks the trend line so I'm gonna set a stop for um, four four bucks just to have a round number because this is, happens to be around four bucks or VWAP is four bucks so let's say if it breaks VWAP I want to stop out so just below four bucks so then you would come to your orders you would go uh, to you could do a stop on quote if you wanted to and you would type your price in here like right it already has 399 in here so that would be your stop price when when uh, the stock got down to that 399 price it's gonna send your order to the exchange and you're gonna get stopped out automatically you have stop limit on quote this is what I use um, stop on quote I have heard, I have not experienced this because I don't use it, but I've heard that sometimes you'll get some slippage on that. You might get filled lower whenever you get stopped out. I use stop limit on quote. What that means uh, is that when the price reaches 399, this is your stop price. This is gonna trigger the, the order to be sent to the exchange. Then you're gonna have a limit price, which has to be lower than your stop price. So I might put in there, uh, 395 or 
390, you know, whatever, whatever you want to put in there, but it has to be lower than your stop price because it's going to get triggered at this price. The stop will get triggered and then you're going to get filled at no lower than this. That's the theory anyway. Uh, I've never had it that I can remember in recent years have it uh, not fill at that price. I've heard other people talk about having that happen. I have had stops blown through, so I guess that's not true. I've had I've had it happen where a stock dropped so fast that I somehow didn't get stopped out. Uh, next thing I know, I'm still in the trade, but I just chalked that up to a, a once a, in a lifetime error or something. So anyway, you're gonna put your stop price in. This is where it's gonna get triggered. Then your limit price is gonna be the bottom number that you want to get filled for. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this number has to be lower than this number. Another type of stop would be a hidden stop. Hidden stop, um, another stop that can have slippage. Uh, the purpose of this is that it's hidden from the exchange. So it's gonna be hidden on, on the server, on E-Trade server. Um, from what I understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments if you know more about this than I do. But as far as I know, a hidden stop would be on E-Trade server and it wouldn't be sent to the exchange until the price was triggered. The purpose for that would be um, if you have a very large order, a, a large amount of shares or, uh, uh, you know, let's say you had 100,000 shares or something and you didn't want to affect the price uh, because if a 100,000 share stop is on there and it's already sent to the exchange, people might start seeing that as it, as it pops up on the level two and the exchanges will see it. So it could affect the price and, and the buying and selling of the stock because of your gigantic order. So that's kind of the idea behind the hidden stop is to keep it from uh, people and the exchanges from seeing it. Um, I've never used it. Don't really see the point in it. I'm not using large enough size that it would really matter. Um, but some people believe in it. And then you have trailing stops. So what that means is you have a money trailing stop. So it's going to be trailing by uh, dollar amount. So let's say 10 cents. Um, if you set that at 10 cents, as your stock goes up, if it backtracks 10 cents, it's going to trigger your stop. If you set that at 50 cents, um, as the stock goes up, then if it, if it were to fall 50 cents, it's going to trigger your stop. So it's going to move along with, with your stock as it goes up and it's only going to be triggered if it drops this amount. Um, the same thing with percentage wise, if the stock drops, uh, 10% or 5%, whatever percent you want to set, uh, set this at, if it drops that percentage, it's going to trigger your stop. That is in a nutshell all the different types of stocks uh, stop stop losses i can't talk sorry uh as far as what i actually use i use stop limit on quote pretty much every time or i just use a mental stop so use typically for me personally when i'm trading i'm scalping so i'm in a stock i'm not in it very long and i've already got my price target and my stop in my head so if it's going my way um, I'm typing in there just on a limit order uh, where I want to get out at and then I'm placing the order but lately I've been trying to work on my patience and that's to me where stops come in handy is if you're a brand new trader and you're trying to limit your risk um, or if you're like me and you're trying to increase your ability to hold your patience if you're trying to increase your patience it can be very handy because I might set it to uh, you know, you could do a trailing stop or for me, I'll move my stop up as I go. So if it, if I was trading along this trend line, okay, it hasn't broke the trend line, it hasn't broke the trend line. And as it goes up, I'm moving my stop loss up. So, you know, after it climbs up here, uh, I might set my stop for, uh, I don't know, whatever the case may be. This is not a very good example because it has so, so many big drops in it that you'd get stopped out a lot. Uh, but again, that's kind of how you, uh, keep yourself from losing a lot of money. So in this, in this particular case, a trailing stop would have been good because as it climbed this huge mountain, you might've got stopped out right up in here instead of, uh, waiting all the way down here, waiting till it breaks the trend line and you lost all that gain. 
Uh, it just depends on your type of trading and what you're doing. But that's how stops work. That's how you set them in E-Trade. If you have any questions, put them down below in the comments. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Um, thank you so much for the support. It's been awesome. The channel is finally monetized. I've made my first dollars with YouTube, which is awesome. I can't tell you how, how thankful I am for the support and how much that means to my family to have a, just another uh, secondary income uh, on top of other things that just kind of comes in naturally as people view my videos. It, it's really awesome. So I appreciate that so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for that support. Uh, continue to support me if you want to. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff helps the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, thanks for watching.